So I'm here with Francis Davidson, CEO of Sonder. And Francis is one of the best operators that I know. And he's innovated something. He's innovated a new version of how to do executive team meetings by actually not having a full executive team meeting, but rather by deconstructing an executive team meeting and having separate deconstructed executive team meetings. So without me explaining it, Francis, let me turn it over to you. And what is this that you've invented? First of all, what was the problem that caused you to create a new solution? What is the solution you came up with and how is it working? Yeah, certainly, thanks, Matt. Um, so the basic concept is that our exec team is now about 18 people and it's very challenging to have productive conversations and drive decisions. It's difficult for people to have something meaningful to contribute, to speak up. If we do pre-written feedback ahead of the meeting, it's like 18 people's feedback that needs to be read. It's just not a, a productive format in which to make to make key decisions about the company. So instead of doing that, what we're doing is that each company goal, each of our five or six company goals has a meeting every two weeks, which we call the, the deconstructed senior leadership team meeting. And in there, whoever owns that company goal is tasked with figuring out uh, what are the most, you know, meaty problems, the meatiest problems that we want to have a conversation about and invite the people that are most knowledgeable about the, these problems to kind of submit their feedback and participate in decision making. And so that's typically six to up to 10 people. I don't love 10, but it always happens that we want to bring more people in the room, depending on the kinds of problems that we're resolving. It can be people that are part of the executive team. Typically, you know, I'd say the majority of the audience is, but what's really cool is that we can draw people from more junior folks that are more familiar with the problem at hand to come in and participate in the decision. So uh, it's really not about bringing only executives, but the mo the best people in the company, the brain trust of that decision should be brought um, six to 10 people to go and drive a decision. So that happens across all of our six company goals. And then each other department that doesn't, a department head that doesn't own a company goal does one of these monthly. So in total, there's probably like 20 meetings a month, call it one per workday. It's an hour where we're going to discuss, you know, the biggest problems and, 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 and the solutions that we're going to enact to resolve these problems. And in addition to that, there's a kind of accountability section where we look at progress against OKRs and then progress against our roadmap color coding, just to ensure that everything is on track. All the commitments that we made are actually being fulfilled. Um, there's a section about looking at the commitments, the actions that we had last meeting, seeing that they were actually completed so that we close the loop. And so it's a system that allows us to, you know, make high velocity decisions with the right people without wasting too much time. Phenomenal. Now, two things go off in my head as I listen to this. One is scheduling, figuring out who needs to be at each meeting and like my mind explodes. Uh, and the second thing is, what about when there is an issue that actually does cover the entire executive team? Like you're creating company goals and that does need buy-in by all of the, the team members. Clearly you need to know what the issues are ahead of time. Clearly there needs to be a decision maker who determines who needs to be there. And then clearly there needs to be a scheduler who goes out and reaches out to all these people and make sure they actually show up. What happens then? Practically what happens is that there's four or five people that end up being in a specific meeting always, almost always. So those are kind of on the standing monthly invite. It's a place also basically all meetings are just occur monthly exactly at the same time or bi-weekly exactly at the same time. You now, if they have to be moved, they'll be moved, but really there's a slot in there. And the most crucial members are already automatically capable of making it. We bring, we bring folks from the outside and we make sure that, you know, they prioritize it because it's one of the most important meetings of the company. If you're like kind of a junior person, you're being invited to partake in that one decision one time, like you're going to make sure that you're going to show up and be there. So scheduling hasn't been too much of a nightmare. I haven't heard about it from, 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 from our, our, you know, our exec assistant that schedules them. So it seems like it's not a big problem. So long as we have that kind of recurring nature to it, that we don't have to plan every single time. Well, well I imagine what happens is everyone on the team simply leaves that slot open. Just that's, that's very likely. Yeah. 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 Right on. And then we don't uh, make it mandatory. If someone wants to invite someone as a contributor to that decision, it's not mandatory for that person to come. Typically though, they'll love to, you know, weigh in, especially when they consider the interests of their department and ramification of a decision could have, you know, impacts on most parts of the company. And so there's another way also for people to weigh in. They don't have to be there in person. They can just submit their feedback offline. And then what happens is that the, the memo for the meeting is distributed to everyone on the senior leadership team. So they're allowed to see ahead of time, even though they're not attending, they can see what are the problem solutions that are being discussed. And if they want to weigh in, they can raise their hand and say that they want to participate. And then after the meeting, a task is sent in Asana that notifies the entire senior leadership team with a summary of the problem solution. So again, there's an opportunity for people that weren't invited in the meeting to raise their hand and be like, hey, wait a minute, that's actually not something that I think is gonna work for you know my, my area of the business I'm more familiar with. So there's a few kind of fail-safe mechanisms. And then the last piece that we have is, which relates to your second question on how do you do things that involve the entire team? Well, we have a monthly all senior leadership team meeting, but we don't make decisions there. It's basically just like 
a little bit of a cultural get together. And then we look actually at all a summary of all the decisions made. So every, all these Asana tasks are copy paste in that doc and we can we'll go through all of it. And it's kind of the speak now or forever hold your truth moment. We track kind of company level goals. And then if there's some kind of information points or just a discussion needs to be had. So we just kicked off 2022 planning a, a few weeks ago and we described the process and we said, Hey, this is what we're thinking roughly. And then, you know, this smaller group is going to go and actually like put together a proposal that's going to be visible to the rest of the team. So, you know, folks that have issues with that can kind of voice their concerns. So you mentioned three things there that seem like prerequisites to the system working that I, I noticed. One is written proposed uh, issues, proposed solutions. So, so clearly you need all of these issues to be pre-written, pre-submitted, pre-viewed, pre-read, pre-commented before the meeting occurs. One, because you got to decide who needs to be there and comment on them. And then two, you need to have their comments actually there by the time the meeting starts. Actually, two is just an efficiency thing, but the first part is, is a requirement. A company would need to have that in place first before they could deconstruct their executive Definitely. team meeting. And the second thing, you also talked about an agreement tracker, Asana. And so post all the decisions that get made post, you track the actions and you attach the decision so the rest of the company can view those and understand where all this came from. The third was, you said, a, a speak now or forever hold your, your peace. That's the American version. Canadian must be forever hold your truth. Francis is Canadian. And, uh, and so that's the sort of the wider group. And you're sort of making announcements of here are all the decisions that we've made Tell us now if we're totally stupid, um, but other, if you don't tell us now, we're going forward with all these. Yeah, and I'd say 95% of the time it's A-OK, -okay, but it's really cool to have a process in place for the time where it's not. And then someone could be actually like, this decision, I, I'm one of the action owners of that decision. I wasn't even in the meeting and I don't have time in Q3 to do this and it's not gonna get done for another few weeks. So it's not just about kind of questioning the decision, but also raising a debate about the relative prioritiz prioritization of the implementation of that decision. Awesome, I love it. Okay, so we know what the problem was. You were, weren't, it was hard to make decisions. Now we know what your solution is. And the third part, the key part is, how's it worked? I've personally uh, loved it. It's really incredible. The quantity of like information that you can keep track of with, without thinking about it, like, it's too difficult to know, oh, are we off track so far in the middle of Q2 on our HR goals? And I don't have to think about it. There's a memo that comes out. It's already pre-decided how frequently, depending on whether it's a company goal or just a departmental initiative, how frequently it's going to be you know, shown to us tw twice a month for the company goals, once a month for the other departments. It's kind of a forcing function to ensure that we take a look at OKRs, take a look at roadmaps, and then you know, force a conversation around the major blockers or the major opportunities that exist. And so I've, I've found it to be just like incredible information flow, really efficient way to make decisions, um, to also, frankly, assess talent as well, like how strong are the proposed solutions? Like you read people's feedbacks and like, who is it that always comes up with like some really insightful things? Who are folks that really kind of, you know, they're kind of checked out or, you know, their feedback is kind of, oh man, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Like it just gives you a ton of information as well as a manager as to who the folks are that are, um, you know, most talented at, 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 at coming up with pretty creative and effective solutions. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Okay, great. And then what is missing? What, what still is a problem even with this system? So I'd say our senior leadership team is 18 people. And there's maybe like a few people that don't really love the management system. Like they don't, they think that memos, like you should do business by, you know, calling people up and, you know, it should just be a conversation. You shouldn't have to pre-read and pre-write. And it's quite a, a lot of work. I attend 100% of these meetings, um, though over time I've tried to assign the decision-making to other folks as much as possible, wherever I think someone else can make a great decision, I'll assign it to them. But nonetheless, I attend all of them. And it's quite a lot of reading. You know, we have a 3,000 word limit for every memo. And like folks love to get close to that limit, if not test us on whether we're going to cancel the meeting if they, if they, if they go above that limit. So it's quite a lot of content to consume and it's, you know, a lot of energy as well. If you're the decision maker going and reading everyone's feedback, in addition to the memo, I'd say a few people don't really appreciate the beauty of it and, and how it works. And they're kind of doing it begrudgingly. And I think it also reduces the quality of, of, of what they do. Like, oh, I always have to come up with a damn problem solution. Sometimes you just want to execute. Why is there a problem solution? And they feel like they just need to put something on the board so that they check the box um, instead of actually thinking through what could be a meaningful opportunity that we could discuss, or maybe, the answer is we have no problem solutions to discuss this week. We're just going to go march ahead. And this I'm high conviction is the best thing to do for the business, but they just want to check the box in the process and they just kind of don't want to hear us about it. So that's one of the, the issues I'd say implementing the system has been challenging for a few of our execs that aren't used to really working in high growth 
environments. So what we've done is uh, my chief of staff, I've kind of a little office of the CEO where he has a bunch of folks that are really, really good at the management system. And he's dispatched these folks to be kind of embedded in the organizations and of, of these other departments that struggle at either don't have a chief of staff or struggle to adopt these systems. So there's less of the busy work. Like you don't have to think about all of the ways in which you should come, you know, structure your roadmap and do status updates. Like just someone that can, you know, answer your questions day to day. Uh, so there's been a lot of growing pains, but I'd say right now, like at the system, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. I don't think there's, there's much that, that that's broken about it. Fantastic. So you basically you're, you're dispatching assistance to all the people who are sort of overwhelmed by this new process. So the assistant can actually do it for them. And then you also mentioned one other thing, which was really key. And you just sort of slipped it in there. Cancel a meeting. Enforcement is probably key here. Like how can you get all these folks to actually create these written memos and read them in advance and comment on the advance? Like that's a lot of enforcement. And so you mentioned one, which is cancel the meeting. So if someone, I assume what you're saying is if someone doesn't prepare the memo properly, you just don't have the meeting and then exactly. they don't get to move forward. But how do you get people to comment on it? How do you get people to, and how do you get people to present the, you know, get the memo in, in time for people to read and comment on it? What's that? I mean, that's just a lot of deadlines and milestones for people to adhere to. How do you do it? The, the memo must be sent 24 business hours before the meeting takes place. Otherwise the meeting is canceled. It seems kind of silly the first few times you cancel something, you know, memo sent out 18 or 15 hours before, but it has to be done. Otherwise it's a slippery slope and then there's not enough time to read them. So some people uh, would send a, me a memo on Sunday, for example, and for a Monday meeting. And then we, we have to add to the rule that it must be 24 business hours before uh, before the meeting occurs and, and really kind of stick to the cancellation if, if it's not sent ahead of time. So that's how we ensure that there's enough time to read and comment. And then I'd say uh, it's kind of a privilege to be invited to these meetings because most people want to be part, part of the decision. Those are the biggest, most influential meetings that we do in the company and the biggest decision-making forums. And so I think folks are quite motivated to be there and, and comment. There's a long list of people that want to attend these meetings. And so it feels kind of like a privilege uh, to be there. So engagement on kind of pre-commenting is not, has not been an issue. There's maybe a team or two where I had to say, Hey folks, like weigh in, even if you're part of the team that's proposing the decision, like I don't believe that there's unanimity when it comes to the problem and solution. So I want every single person that's part of that team to also comment. I'd say that the, the, those issues I've, I've, I've taken just kind of a couple of cycles, a few months to get, to get in place. And then on the, the issues and the memos. So I imagine they're written, are they written in a Google doc or what's the, what's the, Okay, yeah. perfect. And just at mention everybody who needs to comment. Uh, the commenting occurs in a feedback section above, uh, under the problem solution. So there are, you can add Google Docs comments in the roadmap or in the OKR sections, in the accountability section. But when it comes to problem solutions, there's a specific feedback section. So we don't ask folks to comment inside of the problem solution. We want just to have everyone's thoughts below. And we encourage folks not to look at other folks' feedbacks as well to, to avoid kind of you know, the bandwagon effect, although that's very challenging. I find myself even like sometimes like I can't stop, but like reading other people's feedback before writing mine. And so it'd be cool if we can kind of innovate on, I guess, the method by which we kind of resolve these problem solutions by hiding other people's feedbacks, by automating some of the reminders and things like that. I think there, there, there are opportunities there. It's a little bit manual right now. Right. Makes sense. Makes complete sense. And do you ask people to also record a two minute loom video describing the issue or is it memo written memo only? It's a written memo only, though. I think that's an interesting. It's a conversation you and I have been having. You're big in the, you know, video recording space. I'm still, I'm still kind of the, the old fart on that front and a little close-minded to it. So that's not something that I think we won't want to discard, but we haven't tried it so far. Sounds good. Awesome. Francis, thank you very much. That's a great explanation. This is it. Frankly, I've been coaching CEOs of fast growing startups for many years now. I think this might be the single most innovative management tool that I've ever seen. So congratulations on having created it. Congratulations on the results. Um, I do know that Reddit is also now using this system and they are loving it, or at least Steve Huffman is loving it. I don't know specifically anyone else who's adopted it yet, but I imagine it's going to start to spread. So thank you. Really cool to hear. Yeah. And I know that there's other organizations that have had, I know Shashir at when he was at YouTube implemented these decision-making meetings a few times a week. So there's like, there's definitely other organizations that have done things that are similar, but really glad to hear that there's a small contribution here. So hopefully, um, you know, folks try it out and give us some, some more feedback on how it can be better. Awesome. Thanks, Francis.